Is this red wine or is it sour pucker schnapps and red Gatorade? We'll never know. Hey everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today's vibe is 100% brought to you by Jordaline's Spooky Bitch Energy. I just really was like, how can I channel my best Jordaline moment? And that's to be confident, fierce, and spooky. Though this video doesn't really have anything to do with Jordaline, I'm just obsessed with her. So I'm going to link her down below for the funsies. So today's video is going to be a book tag that I actually created for our The Dark Academia-thon that is taking place from September 10th to the 24th. Just as a quick reminder, we will be having live shows for that every Saturday during the readathon. My lovely hosts, of course, are Aylin from In My Reader's Era, Rylan from Reading with Rylan, and Stasia over at Reader C. I just thought that it would be super fun to do some kind of spooky, dark academia inspired book tag. Now, when I was creating this, I did do some research and I saw that a year or two ago, there was one that was circulating around a little bit. I watched it to get kind of an idea of what they asked and make sure that the questions that I created were different enough and I don't think that there's anything that's too similar with them. I just thought it would be fun to do something more revamped and more today <laughs> for our readathon purposes and so yeah I'm really proud of what I created. There are 11 questions because 11 my lucky number and that's literally it. So without further ado, let's get spooky. So the first question is sex or death? So there was this really kind of just like a saying that floated around in my English program at undergrad and that was that we had this theory that all English professors either focus on sex in literature or death in literature. There's really no in between. So what we would all do is just basically ask anybody coming in or ask ourselves, are you a sex or a death? And I know for a fact I am death. I love a good sex, don't get me wrong, <laughs> but I love the high stakes of death and I love the creepy, spooky atmosphere. I mean, I'm a horror lover and a high fantasy lover, so I don't like anybody safe at any time. The second question is your favorite a dark academia trope? And mine is definitely just the whole Greek myth and Greek class cliche, like the way that they're always studying Greek literature and the Greek poets and and they're having little God inspired parties. And it's just it's it's so dramatic and I really, really live for it. The third question is something that you wish was in more dark academia. This one I thought was gonna be really fun because I think everybody's answers are gonna vary quite a bit. Uh, the first one that comes to mind for me, like the first thing I thought of was animal companions. Um, but the, the only problem is that I thought about the fact that they're not going to be safe. Like so many dark academia authors will probably kill our animal companions off. So I want animal companions, but maybe keep them alive. I don't really want them to be like Disney animated where they talk though. I just like a nice broody cat lingering about. Then the next question is your favorite dark academia cover. This one for me is... I haven't read it, but the minute it came out, I was obsessed with it. I know that a lot of people don't like it, but I think that it is creepy and unsettling in the best way. And that is Hellbent by Lee Bardugo. I think that this rabbit is stunning. I think that the way that it's going to look with the white next to the darkness of the first novel. I just, I think it was really, really creative. The, so the other thing though, the other cover I would give myself is basically any edition of Frankenstein. Frankenstein is one of my favorite books of all time. I think that it is one of the best pieces of art that we have in the literary canon. I think that it's got a strong story behind it, a strong story behind the author. And yeah, I just, I think that there's so many editions, you can't really go wrong with them. I've considered starting a little collection of them because every time I like a cover and I, I just, then I see another one, I'm like, wow, I want that one too. Also, like, you can't tell me that the Frankenstein is not dark academia. Like, 
it doesn't take place in the classroom, which I think is an interesting conversation. Like, what counts as dark academia? Because, like, there's mentions of studying, because, of course, Victor Frankenstein, but it doesn't really take place in a classroom. But it's got the vibe. So, yeah. Let me know down below, is Frankenstein dark academia? The next question is, picture yourself. You're in one of these dark academia society meetings. What drink is in your cup? Mine is so easy. Red Bull. Instantly. You're telling me with all this little bullshit we gotta go through, all this studying they don't do, they've gotta be cramming at the last minute. So I already know that I would be like pumping myself <laughs> full of Red Bull just to get to deadlines. And then they're out taking all these drugs and they're just like, oh, we're fine. Everything's fine. And I'm like, no, I need an energy drink. If I'm not getting coffee, Red Bull, please. The next question is name an author that you would love to see write Dark Academia. And for me, I think immediately of Catherine Arden. This is the author of the Winter Night Trilogy and it is a Russian folktale inspired fantasy. She has this really descriptive and fantastical writing that I think would give a really creepy atmosphere. There were moments in these stories that were chilling. They were unsettling and bone tingling. And I just think that if she channeled that energy into a classroom setting, she would have great atmosphere. And then I also think that with her having already written a middle grade story that has to do with ghosts and other horror things, I just think it would be a really easy transition to combine them. And then probably an unpopular one is I would love to see Riley Sager write a dark academia book. Could you imagine, okay, now hear me out, hear me out. The number one complaint that a lot of us have is that we're tired of him writing these dumb ass female main protagonists that have some kind of addiction problem and that's the catalyst for the entire story. I get it, I got it, understood. You can't tell me that The House Across the Lake was not a banger. That book was so good. And if he, okay, so, but imagine, okay, that from like the, I don't want to spoil anything, but the supernatural tendencies of that book and even Home Before Dark. That photograph scene, not out of my head. But imagine he takes that and finally gives us a dumb ass bitchy protagonist male and we get to just watch him be a literary douchebag <laughs> and watch his life crumble around him. You can't tell me that wouldn't be the most entertaining thing ever. And I would love, you know what, just to go on top of it, if he did that and he finally wrote the male character, I would love to see a professor that's actually a strong woman. I don't know if I've just not read any, but let me know down below any dark academias that actually have female professors instead of male. Just because like, women are bad bitches. I think that if a woman was in charge of, like where some other dark academia is, like they don't, the professors don't really know what's going on with their students. If the teacher was a woman, she'd be like, I know what you bitches are up to and I want in on it. <laughs> Question number seven is old book smell or new book smell? New book smell all day, every day. Even when I like go to half price books, I don't like the smell of the books. I understand. I get it. Okay. I, I get that it's like the history of it. And like people are like super into old book smell. To me, I just can't help but think about all the people that are, that like their smells are in this book. I don't know. I've always had this weird thing where like if someone walks by me, I will hold my breath because I don't want to risk sniffing something bad so I guess I just I get the heebie-jeebies when I get an old book and I'm like this is stinky so I'm a new book smell for sure when it's hot off the presses it's so good it just oh the new release books that are like the day they come out and you open them you just take a whiff I I hope I hope everybody does that the next question number eight is a little different, but it's if you were in a dark academia novel, where would we find you or your body? And for me, I thought for a bit because I was like, okay, the obvious answer is 
the library. Just me around books all day, that's where I did a lot of my work. But I think if you're looking for my body, there was this house on my campus. I went to Heidelberg University, student princes, anybody's watching, but I went to Heidelberg University and there was a house that we could use as honor students. And it was like a little pretentious because students weren't supposed to go if they weren't honor students but there was like a lot of little rooms and a lot of comfy chairs there's a lot of scary chairs as well but i just i could see me being like oh the murder where's like a good place i can hide well if they don't have a key to the honors house i could like hope that they're not an honor student hide in the house and then get found and murdered anyway Question number nine is, if you could learn any language, what language would that be? I've always wanted to learn Latin. If my high school had offered Latin, if my college had offered Latin, 100% I would have taken that. Especially as a reader, I just, I love language and I would have loved to learn. It would have been rough, but I would have loved to just learn more about where the words develop, what they mean, and then I could like actually like without and be like oh I know that Oop. question number 10 is what is your favorite quote about death this one for me was another really easy one because I think little people really know how dark and sad some of the quotes are from this particular character in literature if there ever comes a day where we can't be together keep me in your heart I'll stay there forever and that is from Winnie the Pooh I I don't think that they're necessarily dark I mean some of them are like he just has these these quotes that really just make you think and they're really deep and profound and emotional and I've just always really liked that one in particular I actually when we got married I wanted one of the quotes from Winnie the Pooh like set up on a sign I don't I didn't even really grow up watching I mean like I watched the movies like Tigger was I was obsessed with Tigger but I didn't like have a lot of merch that was Winnie the Pooh but as I'm getting older I more and more like it and if we ever have a kid in one of the room design options we've thought of we thought of either Land Before Time because that shit's banging that's my favorite I want tattoos that's a different video but the other option was we would really like to do Winnie the Pooh, especially because it is a very gender neutral story. And then finally, question number 11, the final question is to tag two friends. So I'm going to tag Aylin over at In My Reading Era, as well as Kayla from Kayla Ray Reads. I am really excited to see what their answers are and I hope that they give some funny reactions to my questions because I think that they're they're open to a lot of interpretation and there's just a lot of ways you can answer them. Are you coming up? Don't lick my lippies. You know, I was kind of in the middle of filming. Mommy was kind of in the middle of filming. This is my animal companion, by the way. Sherman, you like dark academia? Can you go away from mommy? Thank you. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Please let me know down below any of your answers to these questions. Let me know what you thought of the video in general. Don't forget to go check out all of my co-host channels down below, as well as I'll link the Discord and some other general information about the readathon in case you're interested in joining. Yeah, I just hope to see you in my next video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the little alert button if you want to see when I post next. But until then, 